me, Catherine, and welcome back to my second channel, Party at Cats. Today, we're going to be talking about instant photography and how to take the perfect Polaroid, even though these are actually Instax photos and not Polaroids, because Polaroid is a brand name. In this video, I'm going to cover basic instant photography tips all the way to advanced photography tips to abstract photography tips. So if you're a beginner, a seasoned pro, or somewhere in between, this video is for you, so stick around. So I have two instant cameras. I have a wide and a mini. I have the Instax 300 wide, which takes the Instax wide film, and I also have the Instax Mini 8. This takes the Instax Mini film, and it's basically the same as the Instax Mini 9. The only difference is that you have different colors for the actual body of the camera, and you have a little selfie mirror. We're really going to be focusing on this camera because it's what I shoot on most frequently. It's compact, it's small, it's easy to take places, and this camera is really, really popular. Kind of everyone and their mother has this camera. You might be taking lots of instant photos during the holidays, you might give one of these cameras, you might get one of these cameras, so let's talk about how to make the most of them and how to take great instant photos. So the focal range on the Instax Mini is about two to eight feet, which means that the subject of what you're taking in the photo should be somewhere between two feet and eight feet away from the camera, which means if you're a shorty like me and you're trying to take a selfie, that's gonna be less than two feet, so the photo will be blurry and will probably end up something like this, which is fine, that's a look, but it's an out of focus look. Similarly, if you're further than eight feet away, the photo will also be blurry. So you really want to hit in between that two to eight foot sweet spot. Another thing that's really important when it comes to taking photos, especially when it comes to instant photography, is the exposure. With this camera, you can't change the aperture. If you don't know what aperture means, don't worry about it. With this camera, you also can't turn off the flash. So do keep that in mind. The way that you control how exposed the photo is, is based off of the light sensor and these settings right behind the lens. So as you can see, you have five different exposure settings for this camera. You have house, cloud, sun, brighter sun, and high key. When you turn on your camera by popping open the lens, and the built-in light sensor on your camera will recommend a setting. You can see which setting is recommended by which light is illuminated. These different settings adjust the brightness of the photo by allowing or blocking light. Sometimes you might want to ignore what the camera is suggesting because you have your own personal style and taste in how you want your photos to look. If you want your photo to be brighter, choose house or cloud. Those are the settings all the way to the right. If you want your photo to be darker, choose one of the sun options. That might be kind of confusing because it kind of feels like you're doing the opposite thing, but remember, your camera, for instance, if you're doing the sun setting, thinks that it's going to have a lot of light coming in, so it's blocking out most of the light. Regardless how much light is coming in, if you choose the sun option, it's going to be blocking light, therefore making the photo darker. If you choose the cloud option or the house option, it thinks that there isn't a lot of light, so it's going to let in all of the light, or most of the light. So what's that option all the way to the left? High key. High key makes your photos very bright. In fact, it kind of brightens everything. This kind of goes back to photography, film, cinematography, all of those sort of elements. I went to school for television production, so that's how you know I'm a d so when you're lighting something in cinematography, you have lights. Your main light source is called a key light. So for instance, me filming this video right now, my key light is my like vanity mirror light that's right next to you guys. If I was being properly lit for a movie, I would also have a fill light and that would help erase some of these shadows that you're seeing on the side of my face. So if I were to take my photo flashlight and aim it right here to help get rid of some of those shadows, I have just created a fill light. Thanks television so long story short, if you're lighting something and you have a high key light, that means that that light is very bright. You could have low key lighting, which means that this main light is low. Well, obviously my camera just self-adjusted because it's like, oh no, it's dark now. So the thing that's going to really help you create instant photos that you really love is developing your own photography style. What looks cool to you? Personally, I love really bright, colorful photos of my friends and I. I love color. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I love colorful photography. So whenever I'm taking an instant photo, I try to take that into account. I don't use black and white, mono, or sepia film. I have a lot of friends who do, and it looks really cool, but it's not really my vibe. If you photograph someone away from a wall, chances are the background of the photo will be dark. For instance, this photo was taken in a very bright, well-lit room. However, the sub 
objects, my friend and I were very close to the camera, so we were the things that were getting all of the lighting. Therefore, it made the background behind us look black. Try taking a photo up against a wall or near a background if you want the entire frame to be filled with color or white. That being said, composition is a really important element of your photograph as well. Composition is kind of what the framing is or what the camera sees. When it comes to the composition of instant mini photography, the choice is yours. This is an artistic endeavor, there's no wrong answer. Because the film is so small, I like my subjects to be really big, so I can actually see the photo when it's up on my wall. For instance, this is one of my favorite distances and compositions when it comes to instant mini photography. You can clearly see everybody's face, it's in focus, it's pretty, and the subject itself takes up most of the frame. This framing, on the other hand, is different. It's not necessarily bad, but you can't really see anybody's face. Subjects are small in the photo, so when you hang it up on your wall and it's far away, you can't really see the detail. No wrong answers, but something to consider when it comes to taking instant photography and getting that perfect shot. Let me know if you guys want more photography videos, maybe stuff on Instagram, how I edit my photos, how I take my photos for Insta, more instant photography tips, reviews, tutorials, maybe some on the Instax Wide 300. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!